Hey everybody, Peter Zion here. I thought today would be a great day to talk about the fusion breakthrough that we had earlier this week. Uh, the Biden administration and the Department of Energy have announced that we've been able to achieve the first exothermic fusion reaction, which is a fancy way of saying that you got more energy out of it than you put in. Uh, this is a significant step forward. We've been working on fusion for 70 years. And the whole idea is if you can mimic some of the circumstances that exist in the sun, you can fuse molecules together, specifically types of hydrogen into helium. And in doing so, they will release energy. And if you can do this on a sustained basis, you can generate a huge amount of electricity with absolutely zero carbon footprint over the long run. Uh, so cheap, clean, almost free energy is the theory, because, you know, that's how it works in the sun. But uh, before you go out and buy fusion lamps, I think it is best to have a little bit of an understanding as to what else needs to happen. So first of all, there's the issue of scale. Uh, the energy required to power the lasers and then the energy that the lasers put into the module that generates the power uh, indicated that we really only got about 0.5% uh, power gain from all of this. So <laughs> in order to power a city, that means you would, with the, the technology as it exists at this moment, would need 200 times as much power just to turn the thing on in the first place, and you get a trickle that is, quote, free. So, you know, long way to go. Uh, second, we would have to be able to build this thing at scale. Uh, that technology does not exist. The blueprints do not exist. But best guess from the theory is that in order to power a city like, say, New York, you would need a power generator that's roughly the size of Albany. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're going to talk about a, a massive, massive, massive facility in order to generate a meaningful amount of power, and we have to design it first. Uh, second... The fuel, uh, the best guess is that the material that we're going to be using is tritium, which is a version of hydrogen that is not particularly stable. And we would have to produce it at scale in the same facility in which you've got your fusion reactor. Uh, we don't have a blueprint for that yet either. Uh, and then third, because the facilities are most likely to be huge in order to generate the power jet necessary, you then have a transmission issue. Because if you're going to have an absolutely massive facility, you're not going to put it right in a city. You're going to put it outside of a city. And it's not going to just supply one city. It's probably going to supply a couple of dozen, which means you now need transmission. And in order to do this at scale, to make it make sense, uh, especially for an early phase fusion reactor, you're probably talking about having to transmit the power not just a few miles or a few dozen miles or a few tens of miles. You're, you're, you're talking about hundreds of miles. And so now we also need room temperature superconductors. So the Biden administration is very excited, and they're, they've announced that they're going to be funding a project with the intent of having a commercial-grade reactor within 10 years, which is ambitious because it's taken us 70 years to get this point. But they also have to solve the tritium issue and the transmission issue. That's not going to happen in 10 years. So best case scenario is in 10 years, we do get a commercial grade facility and then figure it's going to be another 10 to 30 years before we can solve the tritium and the superconductor issue. And then another 10 to 30 years before we can produce them at scale. So best case scenario, we're talking the 2050s, probably the end of the century. So is this a big deal? Yeah, big step forward. Biggest one in 70 years. There's still a lot of steps to go. All right. That's it for me. Until next time.